Welcome one and all, this is the Peace Dealer, and in this video, we're going to talk about Lilith and Gemini. So, when Lilith is in Gemini, you have a very mischievous individual. On one level, being that Gemini rules the mind and thought, you could make the mistake of assuming that these people have very dirty and erotic minds. Lilith in Gemini definitely influences that. But that particularly is not what makes their minds so erotic and sexual. Very counterintuitive here. Lilith and Gemini attract people with sexual minds and erotic minds. So if you have a Lilith and Gemini, especially if you're a man with this placement, you're going to be like a transmitter for people who just have nothing better to do but say sexual any windows all day because you kind of set them up for it. So it's counterintuitive. Whereas you would be the, whereas you would think Lilith and Gemini would be the person that makes the sex joke, a Lilith and Gemini is going to say things in a very sexual way. They're going to be like, oh, um, I can't fit it in. And they're probably talking about like a canister or something. And then they're going to attract someone that's going to be like, <laughs> that's what she said. So that's a little bit about Lilith's influence as far as her sign in Gemini. I'm sorry, her being in Gemini. And I'll see you next video. Just joking, just joking. We've barely started. Um, but like I said, Lilith in Gemini definitely attracts those with very sexual thinking. So when you think of someone, when you think of Lilith actually influencing someone's mind sexually, like making them have sexual thoughts, that's more Mercury on Lilith than Lilith being in the third house for Gemini. Very important to understand. Other than that, the influence of Gemini on Lilith is going to make this individual very caught up in extremes. So they're going to notice the duality of life and play with it. Um, I'm a Gemini, so when I meet people who have their Lilith in Gemini, we so very much stimulate this energy. And we're going to have them, <clears throat> we're going to reflect the eroticism and sexual energy that they get from seeing the extremes of certain things in life. These people make very good journalists. They work well with children because they can really flesh out details of a situation which the energy of Lilith causes them to not hold things back. Whereas, say, Mercury or Venus in Gemini may be held back by, say, a Saturn influence. Uh, even a Saturn square to Lilith in this planet will just make that Lilith individual more <laughs> willing to divulge, you know, things that are more likely to be kept secret. So people with Lilith in Gemini, they get in trouble a lot because even if they're the most modest, shy person, they're going to say that thing at the perfect time that's going to get so under someone's skin. So barring on this, Lilith and Gemini people have silvery tongues. They know how to get under your skin with their words. They have this very mischievous attitude about them. Not in that they're bad, but they know how to play coy and sexually in a mysterious way where all they need to do is smile in a certain way with that glint in their eye to win you over and you'll just start doing what they say. Of course, give or take, Gemini is a quick energy, so they're, they only need but a moment to catch you and reel you in. This isn't Scorpio, I want, as I'll get to Lilith and Scorpio, that could draw you in the whole way and pace every bit of the moment. But Lilith and Gemini <clears throat> is very quick silvery. They take the energy of Gemini and 
see, this is the part where I say they express it sexually. This is how I said for Taurus and Aries, but it's different for Gemini because Gemini is an air sign. So a lot of that sensual, passionate um, energy that comes from when it's in the earth or fire sign, it's, it's just totally mental. It's not even, Lilith and Gemini honestly is not that sexual position like Lilith and Sag, like Lilith and Scorpio. These are very sexual Liliths. Lilith in air signs, especially Gemini, it takes that eroticism and it makes one more able to speak out on taboo issues. They're going to be more likely to point out that person who got molested by their teacher just to generate controversy, just to talk about it. Like I said, they're going to be very fixated on extremes. This is what makes them great entertainers, great writers, great artists, because they know how to take one's heart and bring it to each extreme and each polarity while they sit in the middle and they understand at a very intimate level through hardship and difficulty that you know what, you know, not everything is just one way. There's two sides to every story. Um, these people attract those who aren't necessarily two-faced, but they can see the two-facedness in everybody. They can see when somebody says something, the intention they have to do the opposite, even if that person doesn't see it themselves. So contacts to Neptune can make people project stuff on them. Uh, for a man's chart, like I said, they're going to attract individuals into their life who aren't necessarily liars, but they do be lying. And this is confusing to say because it's not necessarily that they're liars. Women uh, with Lilith and Gemini also attract this too. It's not necessarily that they're liars though. It's that the Lilith and Gemini person can see through the duality of the speech they're saying. So. What that person is saying isn't really the truth, but they may believe it's true, so it doesn't really make them a liar. But Lilith and Gemini can dissect that a lot, which you would think maybe a Mercury and Gemini would be able to do, but Lilith and Gemini gives people very supreme mental capability. It's just that same supreme mental capability, especially with women in Lilith and Gemini, could be a source of mental turmoil for them because then they're always going to in their mind mentally like attack themselves on how they don't live up to that own duality and Gemini could be very torturous when it comes to trying to make sense of two different extremes. Um, other than that, Lilith and Gemini people also attract a lot of sexual experiences to them because they give off this youthful demeanor um, but at the same time it's, it's in a naive coy way and it's in a way that attracts a lot of older people to them. So they will balance this duality. Lilith in the third house is similar, and we'll get to that tomorrow, but they balance this duality with being naive and innocent while at the same time still being lustful and erotic, which can drive a lot of people wild. Usually it's going to attract that Aryan, Capricorn, Aquarian, elderly vibe that goes wild um, and Lilith and Gemini people can have trouble with pedophilia and being molested. Not necessarily being the pedophiles but attracting those kind of people in their life too. Another thing with Lilith and Gemini is uh, it, it they always instigate, men and women with this position always instigate philosophical conversation not because they're even interested in um, what you believe. The person who they're arguing with is probably going to try and convince that person to believe this way or not. They could give a damn less. They just want to get into your mind and they want to see how you think. So Lilith and Gemini is very notorious for saying stuff they don't even believe. Like they'll say, oh I think all cats should go to hell. They could be the best cat lover ever, but they want to get in your head. So that Lilith element of just not giving a damn and, and you know, ruffling feathers and, and breaking rules. Lilith will outright not necessarily lie, but they'll say whatever in Gemini just to get into your mind and, and see how you think, how you articulate. The best way to seduce a Lilith in Gemini is uh, be intelligent, natural aphrodisiac, which is why Gemini's, um, Gemini men set this off in Lilith and Gemini women a lot. But if you're able to 
it, it's not intelligent in a Libra Aquarius sense, however. All you have to be able to do is be able to speak on multiple topics and through your understanding of those topics, they kind of weave. You gotta go like all over the place, but you have to be able to have a certain not necessarily mastery. You don't have to be a master at this too. This isn't Lilith and Aquarius or Libra where they're more concerned about what you actually know. You just have to be very good and versed in conversation. You have to be able to take a conversation somewhere and add life and character and passion to it. And it makes Lilith and Gemini people go crazy because now they start to imagine what you're talking about and they can their, their mind can pinpoint things even if they're not a Gemini. So it kind of adds, this is where the eroticism comes in their thoughts, but not necessarily because they're sexual erotic thinkers. So that's a little about Lilith and Gemini. Once again, this applies if your true Lilith is here or your mean Lilith is here. Lilith and Gemini people are here to make people think and make people not afraid to say some things. One last thing about Lilith and Gemini that is very true is they are not afraid to expose the truth. They're one of the few people who will open up the door and be like, I object to you marrying this woman because she's a hoe or I object uh, to this man sitting in office because he secretly rapes children and no one knows. And Lilith and Gemini is willing to go out there and tell the truth even if they become a martyr for it. Um, but they, it's not Pisces, so they're not gonna try and be a martyr. They're gonna try and be a revolutionary. Until next time, y'all.